Hi everyone, this is Danai and today's video is all about Chopin Prelude Opus 28 number 3. This is actually a video that you guys requested and you asked me whether I could make a video on exercises for the left hand and in particular about this piece because this prelude is definitely geared towards the left hand. So today I will be sharing all my exercises that I would recommend doing for this specific prelude. Today's tutorial is going to be a little bit different because I will not be the one demonstrating the exercises on the piano. Instead, my sister will be playing because she has played the Chopin Preludes very often. So if you're watching this, Kiveli, then shout out to you and thanks again for doing this. So without further ado, let's get into the exercises. So first of all, it is important to say that in this prelude, I find that it is very essential for the left hand to sound very light, very effortless and very even because this prelude lives from the character of having a beautiful melody in the right hand and the left hand just having this kind of whirlwind notes that are not very important. Of course, if one is missing, you can definitely hear it and that's the difficulty to make them all be there, sound very even, but at the same time, make them sound like they're not so important, like they're just coming from somewhere in the background. This is why all my exercises are geared towards making your hand very dependent and very secure, but at the same time also practicing your fingers sounding very, very light. So when I do these exercises, I would definitely recommend practicing all the exercises without pedal, just to make sure that you can check that every note is there, that nothing gets lost in the cloud of the pedal, and just to make sure that everything is clean and really there when practicing. So first of all, I would play through the entire prelude very slowly and really concentrating on each note being the same length as the one before it. I know that this sounds very basic and very obvious as well because it is, of course, all notes have to have the same length. They all are written in the same length in the score, but I find that it is a difference if you just play slowly and if you play slowly while really focusing on this thought because when you play in the slow tempo and you really make sure that they are all the same length, it will translate into the same length in the very fast tempo. So make sure when you're doing your slow run through that they are exactly the same length, but you really focus on making them very, very even. The next exercise is one that I do quite often, and that is to break down the fast passage, which in this case obviously is the left hand, into groups of four. So here I take the first four notes and play them very slowly, and then I take the next four notes and play them fast. And I alternate four slow notes and four fast notes throughout the entire prelude. gives you the chance to focus on playing the fast notes very light and very even without getting caught up in them because you're only playing four at a time and then you're following them with four slow ones. When you're done with that, switch it around and play the first four notes fast and the following one slow and again do that for the entire prelude. similar exercise which is based on the same principle only that I take two slow notes and six fast notes so basically I increase the number of fast notes and I decrease the number of slow notes and then I do this again for the entire length of the prelude <laughs> turn it around and then I start with six fast notes followed by two slow notes. Once 
once you're done with that, now the goal is to increase the fast notes and of course not have them being alternated with slow notes all the time. This is why I would recommend taking a group of eight notes, so basically half a bar, playing all of them fast and then going until the ninth note but then stopping. Don't follow it with slow notes, just play the half bar section with fast notes and then make sure that the last note is staccato, very light and even, the same way that you would play it if it was part of the next group of eight fast notes and make sure that your hand is completely relaxed when reaching it. And again, this exercise goes on for the entire prelude. As I mentioned in the beginning, make sure that you're doing this exercise without the pedal to really hear whether there are any mistakes, whether anything is not clear, because in the pedal, a lot of little mistakes get lost. At the end of the prelude, there is a passage where both hands start playing the 16ths, and in general, the figures that the left hand has been playing alone before and these passages of course i would also practice with the same exercises so the alternating one for slow notes for fast notes the other one two slow notes six fast notes and then also the sections <laughs> exercise that I really like. I've talked about this exercise in previous videos and in different contexts before and it is to play one hand silently while the other one is playing loudly and you can hear it. So usually I recommend doing this by playing the hand that has the fast notes loudly and then the melody silently on top of it because often when we combine it with the hand that is playing the let's say easier stuff quote unquote the hand that is playing the hardest stuff suddenly starts getting some irregularities and it is nice to check them with this exercise and to correct them before putting both hands together. In this case, I would actually recommend doing it both ways. So play the left hand normally and then the right hand silently on top of it. But then also play the right hand normally and play the left hand silently. Now, why would I recommend doing this as well? Because the melody, of course, is supposed to sound like it is not influenced by the difficult things that your left hand is doing at all. It is supposed to sound the same as if you were playing it just the right hand by itself. So, of course, after having practiced the right hand by itself and really having decided on what kind of phrasing you want to do, where you want the music to go, I would recommend playing the right hand with the left hand silently on top of it in order to make sure that you maintain these musical ideas in the melody. exercise that I would recommend before you put both hands together is to pick out any difficult moment that there is for you, whether it is in the two hand section or only in the left hand, and to really practice around it. So for example, take the two notes that are the hardest, then put one note before that and add one note after that, then add another note before that and another note after that, and so on. <laughs> That way you really isolate the difficult passage and make sure that you get it really securely into your fingers. And in the end, finally, put both hands together and play through the entire prelude.
this video and I wish you all the best with Chopin Prelude number three. I would love to hear your experience with this piece. Have you played it already? Are you working on it right now? And also, of course, whether you find the exercises helpful and whether you have anything else to add to the ones that I already mentioned. And I'll see you again in the next video. Bye. Thank you.